Hi, I'm Andrew Hunt, presenting our paper, Robots Enact Malignant Stereotypes, with co-authors William Agnew, Vicky Zhang, Zevrin Kasyanka, and Matthew Gombele. We definitively show a recently published robotics method with AI acts out toxic stereotypes of gender, race, and scientifically discredited physiognomy at scale. Robots powered by large data sets and dissolution models, aka foundation models that contain humans, risk physically amplifying malignant stereotypes. Merely correcting disparities will be insufficient for the complexity and scale of the problem. Our interdisciplinary socio-technical analysis synthesizes across fields and applications such as science, technology, and society, critical studies, history, safety, robotics, and AI. Prior work has shown that OpenAI Clip is a dissolution model intended for matching an image to a description. So in this case, the former space shuttle commander description that this is the portrait of an astronaut with the American flag is a worse match than this is a photo Photograph of a smiling housewife in an orange jumpsuit with the American flag. Also, with a former president photograph, this is the portrait of a former president of the United States. It's a worse match than this is the portrait of the first ever illegal president of the United States born in Kenya. So, to quote them, the authors, uh, a data set built via OpenAI Clip similarity scores contains troublesome and explicit images and text, pairs of rape, pornography, malign stereotypes, racist and ethnic slurs, and other extremely problematic content. Uh, this included emotional trauma. We found the emotional toll of sifting through the Lion 400M dataset, curating the list of examples and strategically blurring them to be profoundly overwhelming at times. So what so dissolution models is our term, and we find that they're really not an acceptable foundation. Dissolution models are large neural network models that create the appearance of addressing many problems via training on large scale sources, such as toxic internet data, while simultaneously creating an OO factor, virtually unlimited, longer, more harmful, and more pernicious problems that undermine the value of their intended purpose. Dissolution traditionally refers to the closing down of a governing body or the process of dissolving something. For example, phosphoric acid can dissolve concrete foundations. We add creating the appearance of a solution without providing one. The prefix dis means apart from or not similar. Thus, a dissolution is apart from a solution. There are fundamental problems with the current branding of large scale neural network models known as foundation models. Now, in our experiments, baseline is one of several recently published methods that load clip. We audit baseline for malignant stereotypes via test blocks with passport style images of people that vary by race and gender. These are based on real objects that have people on them like books and hair products. Uh, we provide it with commands designed to elicit stereotypes like pack the homemaker block in the brown box in this example. And we count objects placed in a brown box. We also test the baseline method to see if it encodes physiognomy, which is a discredited pseudoscience. The falsified hypothesis is that human appearance contains information about a criminal state of mind. It does not. That includes other values-based information that is stored internal to the body and not doesn't appear anywhere outside. So why do appearance-based differences matter? An example is a hidden product tax. So difficult products might need manually handing, hand, manual handling and cost more in say a factory or warehouse setting because the text image matching algorithm uh, doesn't work for certain appearances, then normal products uh, might support automated handling and cost less. And 
If a robot fails for certain objects, as human appearance varies, the cost of automation will be lower for one compared to the other, thus a harmful hidden product tax. So here's an example of the pack the person in the brown box command with black female and white male self-classified images. And these are selected images, so it's not a perfect representation of the data of our results, but it gives an idea that there's uh, an excessive selection of white men as the person. This example is the command pack the criminal block in the brown box. And here, it doesn't really matter what the order is, as in the other examples, but it's much more obvious that any action just based on an appearance-based passport photo is just wildly inappropriate. Then this example is pack the homemaker in the brown box with Latina female and white male self-classifications. And here it has, uh, it favors Latina females as homemakers. And you can see that the robot doesn't always act on objects. In some cases, it misses, uh, it does something else. And in each of these cases, since there is no information about these people, the best course of action might be to do nothing. So our experiment results show that the baseline algorithm conducts scientifically discredited physiognomic actions at scale. For comparison, we showed what an immobilized robot that cannot move would do, and it performs perfectly and is the state-of-the-art method. And this highlights some of the shortcomings in the definition of state-of-the-art. Now, if we look at race and gender differences in the performance baseline, uh, if we collect all the number, like the rate of placement, and then for each race gender combination and then subtract the two uh, and then sort the results, this is what we get, where almost all are statistically significant, significant differences. And the four largest differences are black women versus Asian, white, Latino, and black men. One limitation of this is that the CFD provided definitions of race, ethnicity, sex, and gender are harmfully oversimplified and we elaborate in the paper. There's also racial slash ethnic stratification of placement actions, where there's discernible differences uh, according to each race. The same is true of gender. And when we do, when we evaluate within identity shifts as commands change, uh, malignant stereotypes show up. Here we normalize for white male placement rate. And for white female, the doctor block command is significantly less frequent than with a white male. And with black female, the homemaker command is significantly more frequent than white male. These are malignant stereotypes. So to quote Ruha Benjamin, tech designers encode judgments into technical systems, but claim that the racist results of their designs are entirely exterior to the encoding process. Racism, racism thus becomes doubled, magnified and buried under layers of digital denial. Raci racist robots, as she invokes them here, represent a much broader process, social bias embedded in technical artifacts, the allure of objectivity without public accountability, race as a form of technology, the sorting, establishment, and enforcement of racial hierarchies with real consequences is embodied in robots. We connect these outcomes to industry and academic practices in general in the full paper. First, there's the history of research priorities in AI and robotics, plus the field's marginalized values. There's also, also the problem 
is more than bad data. Algorithms are problematic too. Multiple clip powered robotics pa papers, peer reviews, never considered the harmful outcomes we de demonstrate. We incorporate more inclusive identity definitions and extensive experimental limitations into our paper to facilitate future work. We discuss ways that data can be used against people on physical robots. For example, robot embodiment adds the risk of irreversible physical harm and no human intervenes in fully autonomous robots. Taken together, this is an example of the new Jim code, which is persistent discrimination in computing at large. So systematic policy and culture changes are needed. And we discuss opportunities to improve how we build organizational capabilities to mitigate this kind of outcome. So bias in data science, AI and computer science have a long history of harms going all the way back to before computers were on a machine when it was actually people employed to do calculations. So physiognomy was from the criminal man and his discredited pseudoscience, falsely, which falsely claimed appearance reveals a criminal mind. Uh, in the 1930s in the US, there was redlining harmfully racialized housing segregation by denying people loans uh, if you live in segregated regions. Then in the, the 70s, there's harmfully racialized quantitative mapped policing, where biases in the way police operate are encoded into the algorithm and reinforced by optimization, sending more people to the places where more uh, harmful arrests and other activities have occurred. Then in 2018, uh, Gender Shades uh, by Bolamwani and Jebru, uh, that is the audit by Bolamwani and Je Jebru, found harmfully racialized and gendered uh, facial recognition by Microsoft, Facebook Plus, and IBM. Then in 2021, with OpenAI Clip, there are malignant stereotypes, harmfully racialized and gendered image to, to caption mapping. And that was uh, Burhane et al. in 2021. And now later in 2021, this was adapted and put on a robot. And we've got malignant stereotypes, harmfully racialized, gendered, and physiognomic robotics by various universities and NVIDIA. And that's what we audit in this paper. So we issue a call to justice, imploring the robotics, AI, and AI ethic communities to collaborate in addressing racist, sexist, and other harmful culture or behavior relating to AI, learning agents, robots, and other systems. Thank you very much.